Welcome back, everyone. Um, <laughs> bit of a surprise this week. We have, yeah. yeah. So we have Gina from OK Portugal. Hello. And Cindy from Quinta Bella Pedra. Yeah. Well, my channel is just Cindy Vine Portugal. It is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And we're going to be laying. I've just pre-prepared a bit of stuff here. Um, Gina asked me if she, if I could show her how to lay calçada. So we've got some calçada and a couple of. Um, Piles of sand cement, three to one, fairly dry-ish mix. So, uh, let's go. I then asked Cindy if she'd care to join us for a couple of hours just to learn a bit of this, and uh, she was delighted, so that's why we're all here. Well, I put like the Brita down, so that's fine. Brita's fine, yeah? Okay. yeah. Um, but, you know, not just like that much. If you're putting Brita... I said, it's mine's on like a gravel, uh, not a gravel, a granite... Um, yeah, I know. So you, you can put gravel because gravel is non-compactable. Yeah. Mm. So if you build, if you can level stuff off with gravel, and it's not going to compact. Yeah. If you level stuff off with sand or with soil, mm. it compacts, and then whatever you, if you put something a hard surface over the top mm. of that, it will crack and, and misshape. Okay. Yeah? Right. This is easy. This stuff. So, spread just sand. This is just sand cement. You need to allow for the height of these little things, yeah? So, so you know they're this big, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then you can tap them in just a little bit. It's going to be a bit difficult on the first first row because we've got uh, the, the remnants of the cement that was here before, like here. the edge of what was here, yeah? So we'll mm. get rid of that. <coughs> but the original, cal the Portuguese calçada, they lay it on just like a coarse sand or a very mm. fine gravel, yeah? But um, the problem with that is here, for these circumstances, it's uh, it gets seeds and stuff in it, mm. and it grows up in the joints. And then, then you get yeah. ants and everything, and it just. So, so what they told me to do with those paving stone thingies that I've got for my that I'm going to put in the kitchen, is that I do the gravel, the the britta, then I put a sheet of plastic to stop the weeds. Right. And then they gave me that sand that I've got is that coarse sand you're yeah. just talking about, because then they said I don't need the cement. But do I still add a bit of cement I, to if, with it? So you haven't put um, plastic down and then the britta. No. Right. So if you, you need to form a concrete um, base, if you like, yeah, three three to four inches of, of concrete floor, and mm. then put your decorative whatever on top of that. Okay. You can't just lay this straight on top of um, Britas and, and and a sheet of plastic. You can, but it'll crack. Yeah. You need a concrete floor, and then lay, mm. lay on. Because I was doing this to try and avoid concrete. I don't want to do concrete ever again. Well, what you could do then is do away with the... With the have you you've done any of it, put any down yet? I've only put down um, some of the gravel. I've still got to put more. Because when they delivered that coarse sand, yeah, they yeah. dumped it on top of the gravel. So okay, now the only way you could get over it is stop what you're doing, mm -hmm. put the plastic down, and then put the brick ass on top of that, and then build on top of the brick. Okay, right. The plastic will just stop the damp. Well, stop, doesn't, it does stop weeds, but it's more yeah. importantly to stop the damp coming up. Okay. So if you've got a sheet of plastic down, then put your gravel on to level it out. Yeah. And then you can build on top of the gravel with this. Yeah. Okay. And this will bond with the gravel and make a and make see, a stronger it's concrete. It's fantastic floor. I've come here. Otherwise, I would have done everything all us about face and. That's why you're here. Yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. These here okay. things. Uh, the first row is going to be, like I say, as I forget here. So it's better to use thinner ones if, you, if you're starting mm. from a. But whatever. Oh, same here. <laughs> We've got a lump of concrete there. So, you pick a stone, see it's got a decent flat side. These sides are obviously too small to use. That side's pretty rough, so I'll use that side. Just basically get it looking something like you want it, and then, yeah, yeah. And choose stones the same width that way. Next one. Yeah. 
they're all the same, roughly the same width like that, yeah? Oh, so it's a bit like Lego, right? Yeah, it's easy, and it's a slow, you know, it's a... What were those things you used to put, like, on a board and then you used to iron them to make patterns? Oh, oh yes. yes. Um, oh, it was like a... Like sort of with worm. a T, it sort of with a T, um... <laughs> Whatever that's called, that's what yeah, I re uh, yeah, I had one of those. Yeah, they, they're on like a pegboard sort of yeah, thing, yeah, and you could yeah, put them yeah, on, you could yeah. either take them off or, like you said, iron oh, the things yeah, and then peel. Yeah. Bit, yeah, and then you'd be left with the, the, the same buildings, not like that. <laughs> so, the stones I have aren't particularly top quality, because I've got them all cheap. <laughs> they're, they're, not, they're not the best. They should be lovely square. They should all be like that, you know. Square things. Anything that means it would just take you a bit more time. Yeah. There's no, because yeah. I'd rather go cheap and yeah, cheap, cheap and spend cheap a bit of time and, yeah. doing. Yeah, right. We'll have one. And it also stuff. makes it look far more interesting. If yeah. It's not all perfectly square. Yeah. Cool. So it's only because it's going to be, be a bit more difficult because this is the first row after the. You want to keep them all level. You're going to have a few. These ones here with the a bit higher that stone in the middle. So that generally will stick up. I'll, it's better to have this bit a little bit high there than get that down level with that. And then it's all low all the way around. Right, like yeah. yeah, basically. The stones like this, the width thing, you better go in that way around, yeah? And that's just basically it. Yeah. It's like a jigsaw Why puzzle not, without the lugs. Yeah. <laughs> I just think it's quite therapeutic when you get into it. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's no. Like, like sort of like Tetris, eh? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. So just carry on. Try and keep the, the smoothest sides of the, you know, like that one, that side's not bad, the rest, if you, if you have a small side at the top and wider down the bottom, when you put it in, it means everything else it's will be a gap. big, big gap yeah. all the way around yeah. it, so if it's the other way around, you haven't got those big gaps, yeah? You haven't finished a whole row, so you just water down where you get to. Because I'm thinking this isn't a quick job. No, no, no. So when you finish, like if you finished here, yeah. What? I'll, I'll show you. A minute. Hang on. Good question. Because you don't want all the work you've done washing then, away. Yeah. yeah. Take away or add sand according to what they lie like, you know. Don't want to get too long. With them. I'm very impressed with how you just break rocks like that. Yeah, I wouldn't try it if you put a thing, you need a. Yeah, no, I can just see me you taking know, my finger off. Yeah, taking yeah. my finger yeah. off, <laughs> having a broken hand. <laughs> More. You just oh. got to make it, yeah. make it work. So, that, so I've got a little. Well, I have got a little tiny one actually somewhere. There must be one. What about that half of one that you just broke off, Nick? The piece I broke off. Yeah, the one yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. So you can yeah, fill in bits that little piece of like that. Oh, perfect. Or, like you made it specially. Or you're better off getting a big one. If you find one that fits there, then take mm. two or three out and put in either two mm. bigger ones or three smaller ones. You know what I mean? Just to make your width. But yeah, that's basically it. And then, um, so now the next row should be a lot easier because you're on soft, soft cement all the way. Just like, literally. So now we're on that width. It doesn't matter that the length is the width. Yeah, this mm. way. Because you've got, they're, they're on a slight arc. So 
they come out from the on a circle from the centre. Mm. And they've got to match. When you get to there, you don't want a row. You don't want the row doing that mm. because then you've got to add bits in. So mm. this last row needs to be equal with, with that circle there, yeah? So I take it you do the edging first? Yeah, because that contains everything. Yeah, and yeah. you're doing that the same way, so you're making still the three to one mix. No, nope, I'll edging. do that in a minute. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. I'll show you that in a minute. When, well, Tell me I'm jumping ahead on my lesson. <laughs> Stop being so keen, Mrs. Sorry. Winder. <laughs> yeah, so that. that that's it, just basically all the same level. What I will do, I'll get you a level or a piece of stick. <laughs> so you can check all these stones need to be between there and there level, yeah? Does that make okay, sense? Yeah, yeah. And the way what once we've once you've done if you needed you won't need to, but like where I've come through here, every time you need to move the cushion on, yeah? Just put a bit of sand on it. Fill the holes with sand and just give them a little and it works all the sand in the cracks, yeah? And then that's good enough to put a bit of weight on until you've filled it all in. Cool. There you go. Right, just checking up on the slaves. Oh sorry, ladies. Um how are we doing? Yeah, good. Oh, Cindy's cracking on. First Gina. Nice jobs. Wow, might employ you guys. <laughs> hey, look at that. Yes, because you're concentrating on something. And I'm not uh, having to look at a stupid bloody computer screen. Yeah. No. And the weather's with us today as well. It was quite cold in the mornings. I can tell you something. That I was, uh, um, I'd been working in the Ukraine. I was in the Ukraine during the protests and everything that they had there. And, um, but then my stepfather got very sick and I had to go back to South Africa to go and help. Mm -hmm. So I'd given up my contract and so oh, right. I started a school for children who couldn't cope in mainstream education. Mm -hmm. and, um, and after doing that for three years, it was, man, it nearly killed me. Yeah. And I got, then I got swine flu. Oh, God. And... Um, and so my son said to me, Mom, you've got to go back to international school teaching. You've got to get medical insurance again. Um, promise me you're going to apply. Yeah. And I said, no. And I mean, I was lying in bed. I could hardly move. I couldn't afford to go to a hospital. It, all, it, was, it was bad. And uh, then he said, um, you know, I think, promise me tomorrow morning when you wake up, you're going to look for a job. And... Um, and Cassie and I think you would probably like Norway. And I thought, oh, there's no chance that I'd get a job as a South African in Norway. You know, it's difficult to get a job in the EU. And so I went on to IB Jobs. And the very first job there was for a school in Norway. Wow. It's like my son. It was just wow. random coincidence. Oh, cool. That's so. how I ended up in Norway. Oh, brilliant. Um, so what Jean is doing is tapping them all down to the level of the one she's laid before and they're nice and level from one side to the other by using the, just a straight stick like that and then she's filling them in as she goes with, with sand cement and then just moving one row at a time so as Cindy's bit finished just do a reveal in a minute and Gina's coming on really well with her bit as well. At the moment, refreshment time. So I've found it's better to sponge off the excess uh, cement on the top, which makes the joints nice and even with the top of the calzada. If you brush it off, you tend to brush the joints out and they go a bit deep. So here's the finished product. Look at that. Huh? Experts already. Thank you, girls. Fantastic. Thank you. No problem. Yes. You, were, you were the best pupils I've had this year. Yay! Oh, wow. <laughs> Sorry, Ewan. <laughs> Zoom in. Zoom in. Oh, God. Okay, here we go. So just, just a quick demonstration on how 
uh, I've been doing these radial lines from the centre. So we have a string line from the centre point here, uh, following the point of these 20 strategically aligned points around this sun um, motif to the centre of that and then for level so we're laying things from the top of this to the top of there and it's got a slight fall then towards the bottom of the moon gate see more animals interjecting in our video <laughs> so we're going to lie this is a mix of coarse sand three to one sand and cement I think you can talk over this need to lay it on that centre line and then the lovely Gina who's done a marvellous job with the paving I'm going to show you how to lay the block page, the blocks on top of this aren't you Gina? Yeah <laughs> basically just falling over I had to talk over this bit because the cat was driving me nuts. So this is a three to one, could be four to one mix of coarse sand and cement. Um, not wet, but, but not dry, just a, a workable mix. Um, something that you could imagine you could make a, a ball with in your hand and your hand wouldn't be that wet. So silly question time, how did you get your initial height? When you, did you just go, that's the height I want it up? Yeah. Yeah. Partly from well, the door, it falls, wasn't it? It all falls from up there. So from the from door. Like yeah. So when I do it next to the house, I want it falling away from yeah. the yeah. house a little bit. Yeah. Doesn't have to be a lot, just like you say, a little bit. So which way would I take my, my high point from? From the house or from the house and from one end? It doesn't have to, it can be level across, as long as it falls out sideways, fine. Which would you say? What are you doing, a path next to the house? So where the vegetable garden is, so the back of the house, yeah. I'm going to do that like halfway next to the house. Because next to the house? Well, I don't know whether it needs to be right next to the house, or whether I need to put like a little French drain in next to the house and then a pathway. Why do you need a French drain? goes on the path where's it going to go so that'll be enough then so i won't need okay that's good i like that and also you're taking the water away from the house more then it's not going to fall down well i need right. to there's no gutter in as well so i need to put some gutter in up gina yes okay so these square blocks here all roughly roughly the same size but obviously roughly is a good word look yeah all vary a lot. So what you're going to have to do is see this one's not square there, but it's square there. So you want the square um, top. bits at the top, yeah, square as you can get. Basically, you lift the string up, set, set, nestle them down to the centre of the string until they're not touching the string, yeah. So this is um, wet sand cement, so you need to be wearing gloves for this, obviously. But just for demonstration purposes, you're not okay. going to be. Lift that up. Let's look down so it just doesn't touch, yeah? And then you'll have a straight line because it's following the string. Some of these are obviously more rustic than others. Okay? And okay. just turn that and make sure that the next, then every new one you put on. <coughs> God. <laughs> Every new one you put on is in the centre of that block, yeah? So you might get some blocks wider than others. I'll show you for an example. You just put a small one there. Still needs to be in the centre of the okay. block, yeah? So you're not lining it up one you're side? You're not lining the edges up, you're yeah, lining the, the centre up. Yeah, okay. Yeah? And then we're getting here. If you leave it a bit high, yeah, it's, yeah, you're going to go completely mad, so it just needs to be just to the point that it doesn't touch the rope anymore. Yeah? Okay. I need to put some in here for you, but...
there. See, see the point where you can tell the point when it. I'll just do that again. When you push it down, you watch. You can tell that's on the string, yeah. Yep. You watch. You can tell when it's not touching it there. See. Okay. You can move it a little bit. It doesn't yep. touch it, and okay. it's literally a millimeter. Yep. <coughs> I'm really on show. <laughs> yeah, see? Yeah. It's gone a bit low there. See what I mean? You want to get to the point where it just there, yeah. there, see? Okay. Is that close enough to that one? Yeah. It doesn't make any difference. It's rustic. Are natural. Unlike my filming. Unlike your filming. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's always is nice to be able to do something like this yourself because. Just a quick point, Gina wanted me to teach her how to do all this. Uh, she's got a path to do at home, and she decided that you know if she can learn the skills, she can do it herself and. Um, do you know more paths in the future as well? So on the last one, you either want one massive one or two, two that fit. Ones. So you're going to have to sort of roughly guess how long you want them to be before you put them in. Yeah. I should imagine those two would be would be it, but we'll see. Testing on a little. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. There you go. Nice straight row of stones. And then you just. And then what I'll do afterwards <laughs> is just make sure that there's nestling a little bit. So this goes up the stone a little bit. Yeah. Because bear in mind afterwards you have to lay calzada yeah. beside them. So you don't want this section here too high, so you pick calzada which are a bit thinner. Yeah. That's a really bad one. You pick calzada which maybe are a bit more shaped like that, so that it fits better. Okay. Yeah. So you need to just, and then just smooth this out. It's quite deep here, so that's why it looks like there's a whole mountain of cement. <coughs> Do that both sides. And that in the morning this will be dry and these will be um, all held in place like all the rest. So and then this gap here, you're just going to fill that up with the dry mix? Which or are gap? you going to... Which gap? Like... This gap will be here, this. Yeah, I know, but what I'm saying is that's quite a deep... Yeah, I know, because it's quite deep in this section. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you wouldn't put any hardcore or anything there, you'd just do that I, as a mix? I wouldn't, it's just yeah. like, you know, what's an extra, in this whole section, an extra wheelbarrow? Yeah. Okay. So it's okay. only four buckets of stuff. Yeah. It's not a lot of material. You know? Yeah. Because if you then put start putting different types of material in there and they don't and settle just, and yeah, stuff, okay. and then you get sinkage and you'll have pockets of sunken 
you know, if it's all concrete, it can't go anywhere, really, can it? Look at that, I can even do it with my left hand. Could Not very have... well. <laughs> you're an expert. God. Just move that there, look. So. My fault, I pushed it down too far. Well, it's still wet, we can make these adjustments. Once the calzada has been laid in the dry sand cement mix, I generally use a very fine mist of water um, just to, to start the setting process. And by doing this, the top surface will be hard um, before the, the underside gets hard, um, but eventually it will just harden off with obviously cement in contact with water. This needs to be a light hose, you don't want to disturb the, in between the, in the joints really, you just want to don't want to wash them away, yeah? This is just to make everything nice and moist and when it goes off, it'll be hard in the morning. Yeah, this is the old stuff anyway. We do have a new little bit of them here just to use up what was left over. After all that hard work, um, I had a small traditional Cornish pasty for tea, which didn't take long to demolish at all. Just a quick experiment. Um, we've had to reduce a couple of hives down to a nucleus. We bought a new nucleus box, which are 35 euros a piece. Um, we've discovered we have another hive which needs, you know, just to look in after for the winter, just to keep them a nice tidy little size and not have too much room to warm up. So what I've done to make a normal hive into a, a nucleus box is just cut some pieces of insulation so that they block out the, the entrance there and then this piece drops in yeah and we'll also block out oh there's a bee we'll also block out um, any Thing coming in coming in from the side and the same on this end so here we are down at the bees just um let me do a quick install of my um nucleus invention here so there's the new nuke we bought <coughs> with uh, five frames instead of ten in just to keep them Stronger over the winter, really, and this is the the hive that's struggling. Right again, we got this. I um, didn't use any smoke on this because it's generally a fairly weak hive, and I didn't think they'd be too feisty. Um, how wrong I was uh, when I started doing the work they were fine 
and then uh, as soon as I started moving their frames over they um, obviously didn't like it and they kept going for my wrist on my glove so um, so see me flicking my wrist a bit um, it's something they, they often do but uh, yeah they, they, they didn't really like being messed about Terribly happy. I haven't smoked them before or anything like that. <laughs> out of here quick. So this is one of our peanut plants uh, and it seems to be dying so I'm just gonna pull yeah obviously something's eating <laughs> all the peanuts. Oh dear hello Going back again, we do some cladding on the back of the, um, the chicken house because we really know they're getting to the stage they need to be roosting, so we're going to do all that today. So the product I'm using to fix the vertical timbers, vertical timbers against the wall are these things, they're called smack pins. Basically it's just a, a, a threaded nail on a plastic sleeve, but they're like a roll plug. Uh, and you, you basically drill the hole and then hammer these in. And the, when you hammer them in, they splay this area outwards and it grips. And they are made with a thread on them so if you wanted to, you can remove them by unscrewing, yeah? Really good. I 
I know I said they're called smack pins, technically they're, they're hammer in fixings and in Portugal they're known as tapi. <laughs> so this one here has been languishing in the shed ever since we've been here, never been used, I've not recharged the batteries or anything, uh, basically I've run out of gas, I've got a little bit left in here so I may as well use up what's left. She's a beast.
the cladding I'm using here is um, just basically off cuts the first cut from the sawmill where they square off the bit of timber and I paid 50 euros for about uh, just over a cubic meter no maybe two cubic meters if you work it out yeah so yeah it was a big big bundle for 50 euros There we go, that's uh, the wall of the back wall of the hen house finished. I'll just turn the camera around. There, yeah, so it looks a bit more rustic now. And um, basically not to keep it dry so much as to just to keep the sun off it. Um, there is, you know, uh, what, how big a gap? Two inches, two inch gap behind it. 50, 50 mils, so, so to speak all the way along so it just insulates the blocks really one of the reasons why we're not going to put a concrete floor inside is in the summer when the air temperature is nearly 40 degrees or more um, I think that the an earth floor will be cooler because it won't heat up like a block of concrete and uh, also just show you quickly just quickly rendered all the in inside walls so they will be easier to clean it wasn't a post job just uh took me a couple of hours and now i've just got to do finish off the rest of the outside cladding put a couple of perches in and away they go Drinking the water to try this. Go on, sausage dog. Go on. Go on, Frankie. Go on. Go on. Go on, sausage. Go on. You can do it. You can do it. No, I can't. I can't. Okay, thanks for watching guys, thanks for your likes and subscribes as well, fantastic, um, keep it up and we'll try and keep our end of the bargain as well, sorry about that, wobbly, and um, we'll kind of try and keep producing videos, but in the meantime, we're going to be here, cheers, cheers. bye! bye. So here we are, back at Frankie on the Roads, Carissa. And I'll show you the secret. Oh no, I won't. I can just show you around it. I'm not allowed to be there. Like, mm, a hole in our house. Mm, oh, a little bit there. Mm, don't want to reveal too much. <laughs> <laughs>